Fellas, before I uh, send this truck in to get the engine fixed, I need to share with you guys exactly what happens and how it happens on these 22s. You need to the channel. I had eight 22s. We are done down to five, and now we're down to four. Meaning this one's going in the shop as history repeats itself. This thing's going to be in the shop for several months. So, what do you need to look for? Not everyone does 100,000 a year on their pickups, so some of you guys are gonna be stuck with this issue down the road about 100,000 miles. If you have a 22, every 22 I have, except one, has this issue. I have triplets, I have three identical trucks. One of them had the engine done, this is the second one, and the third one, with the least miles, the third one has 60,000 miles, is starting to show signs. This thing has 108,000 miles. This is a two of 22 build, like clockwork. About 100,000, they go haywire. About 50, 60,000, you're gonna get a pending check in, oh, excuse me, you're gonna get a pending code. Uh, it's not gonna be a check engine light. It's gonna be a pending code, it's gonna come and go. It might come and stay for a day, half a day, and it might go, or it might stay for a month and it'll go. The code's gonna consist of, uh, it's not happy how frequently it's regenning as far as the computer's doing its calculations. A lot of guys are jumping on the intake filters. It's not that, guys. Now, there, there's something to be said about the intake filter, but the particular problem I'm talking about, it's not the intake filter. Uh, second thing, you're gonna have a code. I've seen it not throw a check engine light, but more so than not, it will throw a check engine light. The second code is going to be how frequent, or should I say, how low to the DPF is. First one is how frequent. It's going to be a pending code. And the second one that most likely is going to trigger the check engine light. You're actually going to have a problem. It's going to show you that your DPF is full. Now, 75% of the time it does. 25% of the time, it won't show a check engine light. It's, pi it's coming down the pipeline. Nice thing about us is we have trackers on these vehicles. Part of the tracking system is diagnostic. So every morning when these vehicles are inspected via the tracker and every end of the day, we also see the, the codes that are coming down the pipeline. A lot of people don't. I mean, who the heck hooks up to their OB2 to see if there's any codes coming down the pipeline? If the light's not on the check engine light, then you don't mess with it. But that's how, this, that's how the cookie crumbles. And the final step to this is what I'm about to show you. You're going to have a cold start. Mechanically inclined people are going to understand cold starts are a little slower due to speed, heat, oils, all the above. This is not that kind of issue. Depending how cold it is, obviously it's going to, uh, you're going to have that. That's going to take place as well as far as the speed. What I am going to underline, what is, you're looking for here is uh, an internal knock. Not the injector cold start knock, but an internal knock down there. You're going to hear a knock. But not only that knock, that knock's going to come and go. It's going to be a lot more audible when it's cold. But when it's hot, you could also hear that knock. Now, what is going to be very audible is you're going to hear compression coming out of the intake in a, in a weird manner. But if you're mechanically inclined, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But in this video, I will show you. It's about 30, 35 degrees out. This thing's cold. That's why I'm making this video. This, vi this truck's gonna go to the shop and get the engine disassembled. Good chances we're not gonna see this truck again. I'm tired of these 22s, guys. If you're new to the channel, I operate quite a few of these trucks. Here's my personal 14 that I had for a long time. I gave it to a driver, I got it back. This thing has 500,000. If you don't believe me, check my other videos. I got plenty of these four gens doing five, six, 700,000. But the 22s. At about 100,000 miles, like clockwork, they all fail, except one. I gotta get my hands on it, that truck 30. I think it has about 130, 140,000 miles on it. I gotta show you that truck. It's a 22 as well. I wanna see what, uh, I know it was built late of 21, so that might be my saving grace on that one. Anyway, boys, let me uh, get this thing cranked over. Get those get the preheat all in place and all that good shebang you'll notice the check engine lights not on oh well, actually watch it come on you know now that i'm making the video so the check engine lights over there all right let's go let's get this thing started <laughs> First things first, you're thinking, 
lifters, but it's not. It's compression. It almost sounds normal, but listen carefully. As this engine uh, warms up, the, the, the knock's gonna be you know, more audible. When you blop the throttle, you, wear, you will hear that knock louder. It, it, it comes with the load. It doesn't necessarily come with the speed of the engine, it comes with the load. So if you were to you know, hit the throttle, as you're going into the throttle, as the injectors get loaded, you get that injector load, but you also get the bottom end load, um, the knock on the bottom end that I'm talking about. Well, I don't know how well audio transmitted the sounds, but I'm pretty, pretty uh, certain that you could hear it. Right now, you hear a muffled sound. That's normal. That's the exhaust brake kind of choking itself. Well, the turbo exhaust brake kind of shutting down, choking itself out a little bit to uh, warm up. Truck's in great shape. This truck was one driver and I know exactly who drove this truck. He took good care of it. There's, if anything, if there's any possible uh, way to fault a driver, okay? Let's completely dismiss the, the, the previous history and everything, this wouldn't be it. This guy takes good care of my equipment. I uh, couldn't say enough, thank you, Chris. Thank you for your hard work. Um, you know, this guy babied it, took care of it, ran it nice, took, I mean, everything he could, you know what I mean? He, on those trips that he was kind of uh, out there for a little bit longer. You guys hear that compression? It wasn't this loud before. When you can come here to the intake sound, it kind of gets louder. That sounds normal. There, it's a specific sound you're looking for and it's down in the block. You hear it internally. But yeah, the, the driver went out of his way, got oil changes way, way before they're due. Just because he did his bath, once he'll be in town, he'll be significantly overdue. Guys, keep in mind, we're pushing give or take 10,000 mile intervals on specifically the 22s. Now the fourth gens, we did 20,000. My question is, why are the 19s through 21s running just fine, but the 22s? Because even though when we realize 22s got a weak spot or whatever you want to call it, there's an issue, we cut down, you know, uh, the mileage even more, meaning fresher oil sooner. And no, it doesn't mean that we run it right at 10. I mean, these things get serviced at 7, 8, you know, 10. Uh, one just got serviced at 11, 2. We really try not to go past that 10 and, and service it sooner. It still goes to crap. As I said, this truck was babied. This truck, if there's any blame that could be put on the operator, it wouldn't be this one. But like clockwork, it's a 22 with an ice in me. It's an eight Joe, about 100,000 miles. She's starting going to crap. Also, you're gonna have your check engine light come and go uh, closer to 100,000. You know, we run highway, a lot of highway miles, so starting about 75, 80,000 miles, check engine like kind of creeped in and creeped out as if everything's fine. Um, I have my speculation. I will share them in this video, what I think is really going on. Um, in 22s, well, I have three variants. Hopefully I don't forget them. First one is tuning. Second one is metals. Uh, they outsource different metals. And then the third one Shoot, what was the third one? God, I already forgot. Man, I gotta write stuff down. Um, so the first one is tuning, right? I need to go back to the the, the, the final. Why don't I finish that? There's just one point. The fourth uh, fact that's obvious, I said there's three. There's a, there's a check engine light coming down the pipeline. 
uh, the engine ECU is going to be complaining about frequency of the regen, but it's not going to trigger a check engine light. Second one is going to be uh, that your DPF bank one is, you know, uh, pretty much your high capacity, your full capacity bank one. Uh, complain about the DPF being fully loaded. Meanwhile, meanwhile, this is showing nothing. There's a second variant. That's the one where it throws the check engine light and this will show full and it can't regen. Same exact codes coming down the pipeline. Same exact signs of everything. Uh, the third one on a cold start, you'll hear an audible compression loss through the intake for 5-10 seconds. You guys heard it. Hopefully the uh, mic picked it up. And then uh, you'll, uh, while hot or cold, um, you'll hear the knock in the, the bottom end. It's not so bad when it's idling. It's when you, when you put a load on it. So it's something you look for. Uh, it's not something that'll leave you high and dry on the side of the road. It's not gonna grenade it. You don't have a hole in your block, nothing of that nature. It's just, and the fourth one, you know, you're gonna have a, a check engine light with a laundry list of misfire. Typically it says random misfire, and then it lists cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, all separate codes. That's when you know you're screwed. This one, I don't believe it has triggered yet the fourth code or the fourth step to my uh, initial process but that's what it is. Now the question happens, or the question that gets her eyes, what's actually wrong? What goes south on these trucks? So for uh, the first engine, we actually went in several times, looked at it at the dealership. I was contemplating to make a video of it or not, but I think it would be more of a liability security. I never asked if I could video uh, in the inside the bay there at the dealership. If you guys are curious enough to see one of those videos, put it in the comment section here. If I get enough uh, requests, I will ask management to allow for 10 minutes for me to record them. I don't see how they, we'll see how they feel about it. But your cam gets scored, your lifter um, is bad. And then your push tube gets worn into the rocker. So the seat where the push tube and the rocker meet there, that half ball, it just gets worked hard. Uh, my first truck that went south, help me Lord, I think it was 86,000 miles, 68, I still can't remember, I gotta look at my records. There was probably about an eighth inch of metal less on the push tube because the center where the hole is, wasn't gouged, but the, the surrounding, so 90% of the push tube had a big old notch. So you got this push tube with a pin in the middle of it, or like a nipple, and you can see how much it wore through, and an eighth is a lot of metal. So the biggest issue, or the biggest damage you'll see is your push rod uh, going through your rocker, in, in simple terms, right? So all those are south. What do I believe caused this? Let's go back to those three things that I says. My three interpretations, right? First one, I think it's tuning. 22s do not go in limp mode very quickly. 19s, 20s, and 21s. As I said, if you're new to the channel, go check out those videos. I have 19s, 20s with high mileage. 300,000. Fine, running. I'm not new to these 5th gens. I have plenty of experience with the 4th gens. Plenty enough with the 5th gens. I feel comfortable with the 5th gens until I met my 22s. And here we go. I'm getting frustrated. So, the... The tuning, 19 and 20s tuning is fairly similar. 21 is my favorite tune. It's, it has more power, it's more uh, raw power. 20, did I say 22? 21s are my favorite. 22s is more refined power. I feel like there's a little bit more, uh, more power in the 22s. I just get that feeling, given the fact that I've totaled the Dewey and I've totaled the other 22s. I feel like there's just a little bit more a low end grunt. I don't know if Cummins advertised the bump in the horsepower, maybe it's more efficient, but it is refined. And the caveat here, what I think is really damaging these things is the tuning with aid of the after treatment. Because these 22s do not go in limp mode anywhere as quickly as the 19s and 20s did. Nowhere. We're, 
Well, then we got the sensor going to south. <laughs> For a fact, there's uh, I've double check, uh, double or triple check that there's water in that fuel. There's no water in that fuel. You're gonna say, Paul, you, you, that's your that's your issue right there. <laughs> no, it's not, guys. Double checked. So that sensor needs to be replaced. Um, can't be ignorant to the fact if you do have oil, that's not to be uh, ignored. That light is not to be ignored. If that light comes on, you better start digging. But doubled for effect, triple checked that there's no water in that fuel. Um, so the after treatment is another thing. I feel like due to ship shortage, just the supply demand shortage, they outsourced their different metals for the internal parts. That kind of falls on more on Cummins than it falls on Ram. But also that ship shortage. I, I feel like they're missing something to the after treatment. The 22 goes through, you know, decent amount of DF. Not like the 19s when they first came out. Those things were just crazy. Those things were pigs on DFs. 22s are not that bad on DF. But as you see the issue increase, you'll see the def uh, progress. This isn't my only child. This isn't my only problem. I've had several of these. I've seen them come. I've seen them go. They just ramp up after 50, 60. You know, 75, 80, starting getting check engine lights and about 100,000, you're pulling the engine apart. Um, maintenance, everything's the same as the 19s and through 21s, but knowing that the 22's got an issue, we've cut down the mileage even further more, trying to take care of it. Clearly, with the damaged parts, there's an issue with oil. We keep up our oil maintenance schedule, but it's not that. It's as if that EGR valve just doesn't close. As if it's just dumping a massive amount of EGR, right? Given the fact that it's gone through death and all this, but the truck doesn't, truck's not even in a hurry to throw in a check engine light. And it doesn't put itself in limp mode. In extreme case when the thing's barely pushing. Meaning I've only seen 122 go into full limp mode. Meaning this thing is just barely going. This truck right now, an average Joe would hook up to this. And he would never know that this truck has an issue. But this truck is progressing and getting worse and worse. Um, me sitting here idling it. I don't know if it does it any, any good. Well... I know it's slowly working itself to death. So I better get going to the dealership. You could easily drive this truck probably for another 100,000, excuse me, 10,000 miles before it starts crawling. So, yeah, fellas, I hope I answered all the questions, all the leading factors to this issue, all the signs. I think that was the main part to this video, all the signs to, to the issue. As always... May the Lord bless you. May you all mighty fine day. And uh, I'll keep you all posted on this one. Typically, I show you a video of me driving to the dealership with an issue, right? And then I say, hey, X, Y, Z, meaning this was the results. Uh, and this is what you get, right? But in this one, I want to specifically show you, talk about the issues that you got to look for in these trucks. I really hope Ram steps up. More like Cummins to Ram. Ram to the customer and fixes this issue um, as I said it's clearly an oiling issue but um, is it an oil passage it could be right it could be an oil passage issue so it's not supplying enough oil the oil that's being used is the oil that Cummins recommends 540 and 1030 we've tried 1030 we've tried 540 but the big old question I have, same exact engine, 19s and up, right? Why are those doing well? And specifically, the 22s are going to crap. Anyways, fellas, as always, may the Lord bless you. May you all mighty fine day. Sorry for a long video, but I'm just trying to put all the info out there for you guys running these 22s. Um, just to know what to look for. You know, as I said, I have one 22. It was a late 21, but it was categorized as 22. And it's about buck thirty, buck forty. Once that truck comes in through town, I will shoot a video of it. It's a twin, and the first one is already down. Keep that in mind. The first truck 
So truck 20 and truck 30. Truck 20 is long gone. Truck 30 is still running strong. So there's, you know, you have that too. Truck's running just fine. Anyways, I'm going. Bye-bye.